Hey, what is going on, Haunt Nation? I am Ant, and once again, we are all coffee, no tea, because tea did not go to this haunt, being the last day of the season. Figured I'd at least wrap it up for you and give you an idea of what it was like to go to Headless Horseman Haunted Hay Rides in Ulster Park, New York. So, um, was planning on trying to get the Brighton Asylum tonight. Doesn't look like that's going to work out. They are sold out online for tonight, so, oh well, uh, late to the party, and, you know, you don't get in. Anyway, um, 626. So, this is going to be the review for uh, Headless Horseman Haunted Attractions. Uh, according to their website, now in Ulster Park, Park, New York, for the 2022 season. Uh, price is somewhat expensive, uh, about $60 a ticket online, and it, it is, I believe, $75 a ticket on site. Uh, they do have a like an RIP upgrade. I believe that's $35 a ticket. You can buy them on site or ahead of time, and that pushes the ticket price up even higher. So... Uh, parking is free, but just so we're clear, even though the ticket price is $60, between their online fees and New York State tax, New York State tax was, I believe, $6 and change, but their online service fees are over $7. So probably double what everybody else's online service fees are. Be forewarned, the tickets still come close, as I've said before. It sounds like they're giving you a break for buying online, and then when you add everything together... It's still close. It was like $73 and change. So it's still close to the $75 at the door. If you do buy at the door, you are going to pay New York State sales tax regardless. So that would probably put the ticket price somewhere in the $81, $82 range. Just like I said, forewarned is forearmed, right? Just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, uh, what kind of a haunt is it? Well, traditionally it is a... They, they say they have 10 attractions. Let's let's get this out of the way right off the bat. Uh, 30 years they've been open for 27-ish of those 30 years. It's always been a hayride and then the other attractions. So they have a hayride. They used to just have a corn maze and then two standalone haunted houses. So now the corn maze... Um, let, me, let me start over. So you would get off the hayride and then you would go to the corn maze it, years since they've erected the lunar motel and then there's this whole 1960s era like 50s 60s era uh whole motel and diner and whole walkthrough thing so a little disingenuous because once you get to the lunar motel which is two you run two through eight just in a straight line there are no choke points there's no stopping there's no queuing between each of those numbers you just kind of go from the Luna Motel into the diner, into the into the corn maze, into you know all their all the different things that they have set up there. There's a little carnival type area. Um, there is a uh, like a possessed greenhouse type thing, but it's basically all one long thing. So if you asked me, I would say they have four attractions, not ten. They list it as ten. Now. Um, there's always a theme of, you know, the that includes, somehow includes the Headless Horseman coming to take your soul or what have you. Um, big, big, big thing to know for this season, which is over, and probably other seasons going forward, it does not look like they are going to have the Hayride anymore at all, period, end of story. Um, there was a... A, an employee there because I heard someone else talking I overheard someone else talking about them getting rid of the hayride so I did ask an employee personally what the deal was with the hayride and she replied that uh, there is no hayride this year it's a woods walk and there probably isn't going to be a hayride anymore because of lots of rules which to me sounded you know, like rules the state is making, which to me sounded a little weird, so I inquired further. Oh yeah, Glenn Libet, Caribbean Reserve, by the way, and today's cigar is a A.J. Fernandez New World, which is lovely. But, 
upwards and onwards. Um, upon further inquiry, inquiry, blah, 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 wow, I can't even speak today. Inquiry with this person, um, this employee. The employee told me that apparently they have some kind of bananas rule. See, I figured either they did away with it for COVID, you know, which we're we're past that. I would imagine, especially when they corral you into you know, like an animal pen to queue up for the hayride or the woods walk and you're on top of each other. So don't tell me you're going to social distance at that point. Um, I figured either that was going to be it or maybe they paused it this year because of the rising fuel costs. I mean, diesel fuel is close to $6 a gallon in New York and uh, I can imagine that the tractors pulling these, you know, these hay skids probably don't get great mileage, right? Probably only a few miles to the gallon. It probably costs a lot. So maybe to cut costs or to not increase prices or decrease their profit margins. But that wasn't the case. Apparently, according to this employee, New York State wants them to have seat belts on the hayride. Uh, yeah. And if that is true, that is absolutely fucking absurd. New York has once again gone above and beyond to be one of the most bananas fucking states in the union if that is indeed the case that they want them to put seat belts on a haunted hayride nuts absolutely nuts they beyond stupid and nuts so good luck new york god bless if if that is indeed a thing and that's not just some made-up excuse but it did come directly from an employee of the park now they do they do still have the sign outside that says haunted hayrides and attractions but their website just says, you know, haunted attractions. So I don't know. Don't know what to think. Um, timing and spacing. So here's, here's what we're going with. N you normally start on a hayride. So there is no spacing. And the same thing with the woods walk. There is no spacing. They basically put you together in a group of 30 or so, whatever would be on the hayride. And then you walk through the woods. Now the spacing between groups was fantastic. They gave all the different groups plenty of time. But you're in a giant group, which does wind up being in a conga line because when you get the different parts that you have to go through, you know, it's kind of, they're splitting you up a little bit, but you're really kind of stuck in a group. That said, I don't know what happened because there was a, like, like a house of sorts, not a house, but like, you know, a structure that we had to go through a little bit through and we managed to lose everybody so wound up doing the whole rest of the day hayride walk by myself which was very nice um great experience but do not expect that you know it was purely by luck that 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 happened when i got to the lunar motel there's a mandatory photo station that they make you go through take a couple photos um looked at the photos at the end they're just you know the background they had with us smiling or feigning fear so nothing like on a blue screen or a green screen that's gonna you know make you go oh wow that's really cool I like what they did maybe I'll buy it if you want a photo to commemorate that you were there by all means do that um, so once we got to the Lunar Motel timing and spacing wasn't great either so it was a long line which I expect night before you know last last night of the season for that haunt night before Halloween you'd expect maybe to be busy it was a Sunday so you might expect less of a crowd, but I never do. The um, the spacing wasn't great. Now, they did put a group of four and a group of two together again, um, which wasn't ideal. But I will say that the things in the haunt itself seem to be on a timer rather than triggered by people walking through. So you are going to either catch it or not catch it, not because you set it off, just because they seem to be on a timer. Uh, plenty of animatronics. Uh, animatronics seem to be working well. Lots of actors and actresses, and they all seem to be into it and doing their jobs, which is good. The costumes were appropriate. No real prosthetics. Uh, the biggest prosthetic-y kind of thing going on was probably the Headless Horseman himself, who has no head. We all know who that, how that's done. But other than that, no real prosthetics or anything, just some generalized, you know, face paint and appropriate costumes for the scenes. Most of the scenes did make sense, and the people in the scenes, for the most part, did make sense, except for one scene that I noticed 
which was kind of like an underground crypt with an altar in it and everything. And then I noticed aliens and mixed about in there, which to me didn't make any sense. I wouldn't call the sets movie quality. I'd call them adequate. They were good. Um, not great. There were a lot of them. There were some big structures, especially on the woods walk, which you would expect because you'd be going through on a hayride. So you wouldn't expect, you know, small, intricate details. Um, like I said, all of the electronics did seem to be working. All of the, uh, all of the light and fog effects. Um, there were a couple of animatronics that were noticeably broken that had a broken leg or broken arm, but they were working, you know, just, you know, and an animatronic spider is coming at you and it's just got one leg flopping around is what it is. It worked, but it's broken. Uh, it is a long haunt. It will probably take you a couple hours to get out of there. And not only because of the length of the lines. Um, you you know, the area from the Lunar Motel through the whole corn maze and that whole section is probably a good 20-minute 20, 20 walk, if not more. The Hayride is probably another good 20-minute walk. Um, they didn't... I, I was afraid that they would try to, you know, make you go and take a shortcut. Basically, just a really short walk to the Lunar Motel because that's the next part and they had no other way of getting you there but they did not do that which I was happy with and somewhat impressed by yep this is what we'd call a pregnant pause because I'm trying to light my cigar again for those of you who just listen and don't care to see my pretty face anyway <laughs> um uh, bathrooms there were all porta potties, uh, and they were there were plenty of them, and they were, you know, positioned in places that made sense. You know, uh, you could go between areas of the haunt, and it was pretty decent. Uh, concessions there seemed to be between the hayride and the lunar motel. There looked like there was a little house that sold snacks. Um, also, at the very beginning, when you first enter the, I'm not going to call it a park because it's not, but they have a an area in the front where you would, you know, that has whatever their food and merch and stuff is there, and then you'd queue up. And you basically end up there at the very end. You can also go back into the park proper, but they won't let you into any of the attractions once you're done done. Um, I did not notice any real add-on activities. There were no, there was no axe throwing. I know they do have they do have um, uh, escape rooms. However, I didn't see them. So I don't know if they're on the property where the haunt is, if they're somewhere else. I didn't book one, so I do not know. So technically that is an add-on activity. But they also tend to fill up really quick, especially on nights with haunts. And you will be with groups of people that you don't know because they will fill them to capacity. That's just what they do. Um, noticeable changes. Yeah, I haven't been there in a long time. So... I did see a lot of different things. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that was the same, especially in the second house, uh, the first and second house. So at the very end, there is a house proper and another house proper. I consider the second house like their main house that was, that's been there as long as I can remember. And the other house was an addition at some point, but now it's the first house you go through. Uh, that has kind of like a laboratory slaughterhouse kind of effect. The second house starts out like a house proper, and then there are other things in it that are just a little weird, uh, like a like a water scene with a boat in it, and, you know, kind of doesn't fit together, but it is pretty cool, and there are a lot of cool things going on. So it is a wonderful-looking house inside. Um, both of them look great. Uh, the, the motel... No, not the motel set. The motel set was fine. The diner set was a little interesting because they have it in a big like a big permanent tent kind of so you if you looked up past the walls the ceiling of the tent was really really high so it could take you out of the immersion the immersion of the experience but if you just kind of look ahead you'll stay in it um what did i like well i like the length um i you know their their sets and props everything seemed to work I like. I kind of did enjoy that things were on a time trigger because I caught things I would not have been, I would not have caught, in the group that I was stuck in. Now, on that, I did wind up in the second house with a group behind me of scaredy cats, which just made it fantastic 
because they were jumping out of their skin at everything. The final house, the second house, um, same thing. That group was still behind me, but I also had a group in front of me that were scaredy cats. So that was fantastic. I was sandwiched in between people that were being scared around every corner. And for me, that's just a highlight. I absolutely love that. I would absolutely love to have a real scaredy cat come with me every time I go to a haunt because it just makes my experience that much better. What didn't I like? Uh, I They make a bajillion dollars a year. I'd like to see all of their animatronics and everything that they have looking basically pristine. Now, I don't know if things were broken from years past, if they got broken recently or during this season and they weren't able to replace. I haven't been here in years. So I can't tell you, but I'd like to see everything working properly because you know they they are a very very well known what everyone would consider high end always on some list in the top 10 or 20 haunts in the country so i'm going to expect a little bit more from them um you know i also didn't like that the hayride wasn't there i really like hayrides I'm not as big of a fan as T is, but it was very disappointing for me going to Headless Horseman that I've known for about 30 years as being a hayride and considering themselves to be the best hayride in the country, right? They flat out say they're the best hayride in the country. Well, you don't have a hayride, so you're no longer the best hayride in the country. Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, the spacing also wasn't fantastic. They were letting groups in starting at the Lunar Motel with a little bit of lead time. So that's good, but they were also putting us into groups. Same thing with the house proper. They were putting people into groups uh, of at least eight. Now, how many? Three, go. How many? Four, go. How many? Whatever, go. So I was noticing, luckily for me, again, I got lucky. They asked me how many. I had a group you know, of two, and they were like, oh, wait a minute. And then they let the group of you know the three or four groups that were bundled together go so i was lucky to be at the front of my group you can't bank on that happening so the spacing isn't great in so much as they're not putting people through individually or in small groups they're putting them through in larger groups i just got really really lucky um what would i change i'd absolutely change the spacing and i would bring back the hayride i mean it is their deal it is what they're known for, and there are going to be people that go there and are looking to get, you know, a hayride out of it. You know, I'd also really, like, stop with the fucking exorbitant raping fees for the online fee. There's no reason for an online fee to be $7. I know you're making a profit at that point. That's not Haunt Pay or any of these other services and if it is, you really need to change services because you can change to a service that will charge half of what people are paying for those online fees. Absolutely love the parking. Please keep that free. Um, and, you know, the length of the haunt. I, like, again, I think it's a little disingenuous saying that two through eight is the Lunar Motel through, you know, till you get to the next, till to the first proper house. A little disingenuous. You know, especially if you're not going to be stopping people and queuing them through the individual areas, you know, because they just kind of blend one into the next, into the next, into the next with a corn maze, which isn't really a maze. It's just a guided walk through, you know, dead corn. So a little disingenuous, but you're still getting four attractions for your money, you know, solidly four attractions for your money. So my rating um, T, you should have fucking gone, bro. Uh, really disappointed that you, that you didn't. Uh, rating has nothing to do with the fact that you did or did not go. But I'm going to say that they were pretty fucking solid this year. I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them a 7.5. I think you might have gone with a 7. I don't know. You didn't go. Uh, but I'm going to go with a 7.5. They weren't, they weren't the best. They weren't horrible. But no one got above a 7.5 this year which is why I was hoping to go to Brighton. I was hoping maybe somebody would break that and hit an eight. But a seven five, definitely a solid haunt, definitely worth going to, definitely worth spending your money at, although you can probably get as good an experience at somewhere else a little cheaper. But that said, that's the end of this review.